Then there's Ozymandias from Watchmen. Watchmen is about a group of crime-fighting superheroes who retire and go their separate ways. All but two of these superheroes, Ozymandias and Dr. Manhattan, keep their identity secret. Soon it appears that members of the retired supergroup, the Watchmen, are being targeted for assassination. It is eventually revealed that superhero and former colleague Ozymandias is behind the plan to neutralize his ex-partner so that he may bring about a massive change on a global scale by using a series of false flag terrorist attacks. Watchmen, similar to Gabriel, includes a superhero who's disappointed that his comrades who are retired, in hiding, and letting a potentially evil plot proceed unchallenged. But more than that, it includes two characters whose names sound similar, Osmodius and Ozymandias. Not exactly a stretch. Still more, both are behind assassinations and rumored to be homosexual. Here's Adrian, aka Ozymandias, from Watchmen, hanging out with the village people. Even Adrian fight. Possible homosexual. Here's Osmodius's play toy, who is obviously a man in drag, and in this scene definitely ties him to the Joker, and it was designed to. Just like the famous scene with Jack Nicholson looking into the mirror, Gabriel has this scene. And similar to Jack Nicholson's Joker, Osmodius cuts up his human pet and refers to it as art. It's fucking hideous. She's not finished yet. Why is she wearing a mask? Well, she's just a sketch, really. She is a living work of art. I don't know Picasso, but do you like it? Hints that Asmodeus is homosexual also come up in Spawn. <laughs> Get away from me, you bunch-packing midget! These five characters have quite a bit in common. Four wear purple suits, four end up betraying the people he's working with, three are gay, two are concerned with gathering souls from Earth, Ozymandias from Watchmen has what appears to be a left eye on his belt, while Osmodius from Gabriel gets his left eye gouged out, and all five run criminal organizations and are cold-hearted. My guess is, the true relationship between this character and the Joker is more accurately told in Spawn, where there's actually an agreement between the two. The Joker's most common role is to corrupt this main character by provoking him into making bad choices, rather than killing him. And even though Osmodius recognizes Gabriel as an enemy angel, rather than fight him, he instead tries to corrupt him, and does so because he's under orders to do so. Give this gentleman half price. I've got a feeling we'll be seeing him again. Watchmen and Gabriel also have another character in common, Moloch, complete with odd-shaped ears, bald heads, and both working for the bad guys. Moloch was an ancient Canaanite god who was mentioned in the Bible as a pagan god whose followers would sacrifice their children to by throwing them in fire. Today, Members of the Bohemian Grove gather to reenact this ancient ritual by burning a human in effigy. So who is Osmodius? Osmodius is mentioned in both the Hebrew Talmud and the Book of Tobit. He is considered to be one of the princes of hell, whose cardinal sin is lust, and he reportedly twists people's sexual desires. In the Talmud, he's even depicted as a humorous fellow who marries Lilith, another character in Gabriel. In Watchmen, Ozymandias runs a company called Pyramid International, and in the movie, creates a new world order by uniting the nations against Dr. Manhattan. But in the graphic novel, the crisis Ozymandias uses to unite the nations is a fake alien invasion. By the end, Ozymandias, who is obsessed with all things Egyptian, succeeds in his conspiracy, which results in world peace. Watchmen includes yet another character of Illuminati significance, Ra, the sun god, aka Dr. Manhattan. Dr. Manhattan, who chills out at the Rockefeller Military Research Center, is repeatedly connected to the sun god, Ra. And similar to Ra, the sun god from Egyptian mythology, Dr. Manhattan turns his back on humanity and leaves Earth, and humanity turns against him. So Dr. Manhattan retreats to Mars and constructs a flying machine that looks like the sun no matter which direction you're looking at it. Here's Ra, written out in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Notice the sun symbol, here. Now look at the symbol on Dr. Manhattan's forehead. This Egyptian symbol designates the sun. It's also worth noting that Ozymandias, Manhattan's buddy, has a belt adorned with the Eye of Ra. Even our old super friend, the reluctant Batman, shows up in Watchmen. 
more so than the graphic novel, the movie contains one of the biggest ripoffs of all time, The Night Owl 2, aka Batman, The Dark Knight. Daddy left him a pile of cash, an alter ego he and everybody else is afraid of, advanced gadgets and vigilante doodads in his basement, and some scenes are just plain insulting. Watchmen are an obvious reference to the Watchers, spoke about in the Bible, Book of Enoch, and numerous other texts as being beings who were sent to guide and protect mankind, but eventually go bad. Watchmen caters to conspiracy theorists. It includes pyramids, a new world order, Rockefeller Military Research Center where the sun god hangs out, a grassy knoll, Moloch, and a character called Mothman. In much of Alan Moore's work, the authorities are often more corrupt than the criminals. Masonic and Illuminist imagery is also common in his work. Watchmen is even capable of making double thinkers out of the 9-11 aware by providing a reasonable excuse to use the false flag terror option. False flag terrorism is when a terrorist attack is conducted against one's own country or someone else's and is blamed on an innocent party. Adapted from the comic book, Hellboy is about a character named Hellboy who's half human and half demon. He works for a group called the BPRD, which is the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. The BPRD is a super secret branch of the government involved with protecting the public against monsters and other paranormal threats. Hellboy came out of a portal from hell back during World War II and was raised by his adopted father, Trevor Broom. Hellboy has many attributes of the Antichrist. First, numerous mentions of him having been sent from hell to destroy Earth and usher in the apocalypse. Born from a womb of shadows, sent to destroy their world, that you still believe you belong. Second, Hellboy's quote-unquote true name was Anung Un Rama, which means the Beast of the Apocalypse. The Antichrist is commonly referred to as the Beast or the Beast of the Sea in the Bible, and when told that his true name is inscribed on the chains that hold him, your true name is inscribed around the locks that hold you. All you can see are sixes, sixes everywhere. Three sixes in a row, or 666, is referred to in the Bible as the Mark of the Beast and is associated with the Antichrist. Like the Antichrist from the Bible, Hellboy suffers a fatal wound and is healed. In Hellboy's case, he's healed by a dark angel with eyes all over him. This malevolent character heals Hellboy's fatal wound and warns that it's Hellboy's destiny to bring about the end of the world. But you should know, it is his destiny to bring about the destruction of the Earth. According to Islamic tradition, Hellboy is further connected to the Antichrist. One of Islam's narrations includes a testimony of Tamim Dari from the Hadith of Fatima, where he arrived shipwrecked on an island and encountered the Antichrist, which the Muslims call Dajjal. They landed on the island, where they were met by a beast who was so hairy they could not tell its front from its back. It said, I am al Jassassa. It said, O oh people, Go to this man in the monastery, for he is very eager to know about you. We quickly went to the monastery. There we found a huge man with his hands tied up to his neck and with iron shackles between his legs up to his ankles. In the same Islamic text, the Antichrist is further described as being large with red complexion and one eye. Then I turned around and saw another man with a huge body, red complexion, curly hair, and one eye. His other eye looked like a floating grape. And here we see Hellboy, extremely muscular, red complexion, dubbed the Beast of the Apocalypse, chained up in what appears to be a church or a cathedral. Hellboy also has roots in Egyptian mythology. The first Hellboy film sounds a bit like the story of Osiris, Anubis, and Set. According to Egyptian myth, Anubis is Set's son, but adopted by Osiris. Anubis is the god of the dead, usually depicted as a jackal-headed man. Set kills Osiris like Rasputin kills Trevor Broom and tells Hellboy that he is his father. Child. All grown up, I see. That voice.